Hi, everybody. Professor Jones, in case you haven't met me before. Uh, I am your instructor for this semester. I'm going to do a little slideshow about myself so you know who I am, so that I'm more approachable and shit like that. It's nice to know something about your teachers. Uh, before we do this, this is likely the first class for many of you in programming. And having a laptop or something, if you have one with you, you probably want it out right now. I'm going to walk you through how to set up it. It's it's called the IDE. What the fuck does IDE stand for? I forget. Juan knows. Uh, no, he doesn't. I guess not. It's if you click on, I'm going to yeah, I'm sharing screen. Click on modules. Our orientation module actually has it. You go to Microsoft Visual Studios. If you have a non Apple product, you should be able to install it. I think Chromebooks can do Visual Studios. That's for integrated development. Yeah, that's it. Integrated development environment. Something like that. Yeah, but to access that um, download page, do I go through um, modules or? You can go directly to it if you want. I have a link to the, if you click on modules, it's in orientation. Okay. Click on Microsoft Visual Studios and other IDEs. And the official website for Visual Studios is this one. When you're at this screen, you can ignore the whole GitHub Copilot shit like that. Scroll down until you see download and you wanna pick Community 2022. Okay. Uh, I already have it downloaded. I wonder if I should just, no, I'm not gonna close it out. Uh, if you, once you download it and you run it, I actually have a video on how to, like when I installed it, so you can see how it works when it's installing. Uh, Juan, would you stand up for a second? Juan is the SI or supplemental instruct instructor, yeah, supplemental instructor for computer science one and two this semester. He's, in other words, my minion. Uh, he's going to be hold, hosting workshops to help you guys out. So you got a Discord server. We'll talk about that later. Uh, if you have problems setting up your IDE, he's going to float around and help you guys while I go, go over a presentation. How's that sound? If you just need help, raise your hand. How's that sound? We already got a hand up. Uh, if you have an jefecito, that's got to be you. Xcode might work for you. I have some things on here for Apple. Uh, Visual Studio Code, I think, works. It should be do you able to do C++. Uh, if you didn't bring your laptop and you just or you you have a PC and not a laptop, uh, this will be on the. I'm recording every lecture. They will be loaded to YouTube afterwards, and then a link is going to be put on Zoom. So if you ever have to miss class for anything, there's going to be that there. It's also those videos are going to be accessible for my online class. Hi, online class. Uh, you guys will have access to that. Uh, Apple, I hate Apple. It's like more expensive, does the same shit. I don't buy my, I've never bought an Apple because they're, yeah, go ahead. Would you be using the GitHub uh, platform when you would be using like C++ or anything like that, like Visual Studio? We're using Visual Studios. That launch screen, when we went there, was Visual Studios. It says Visual Studios. They're advertising this shit up here to like co-pilot a new program. But if you scroll down, community it said notice it says create the future with visual studio 2022 that's the one you want to use and use community 2022 because it's free yeah you uh, need help in fact for the students at home i'll give you a few minutes to do that as well uh if you're live right now there's a few students here that are live Again, I went to modules. 
clicked on Microsoft Visual Studios and other IDEs. And the official website is this. Scroll down and click download and grab community 2022. It'll give you optional stuff to install, depending on what you want to use it for. You might put other things in. Uh, if you want to be like your main gig is computer science, you want to be a computer scientist, you might want to download more shit, but you don't have to do it now. I don't know if it does or not. It doesn't. Okay. There are other websites, uh, other, I wonder if it'll let you use like the Eclipse IDE or something like that. Uh, oh, wait, I actually have something in here. Google, did you try Googling IDE for Chromebook? I apparently had a student say they did that the previous semester and it worked really well for them. So if you have a Chromebook, you poor unfortunate soul. <laughs> uh, if you don't have a laptop and wanna check one out, I know the library used to, at least as of last semester, I wanna say it was a library. My friend got the last one. Are they, they're out already? Yeah. Huh. He told me he was like, That surprises me. So I don't know. Maybe you want to try your luck with more speaker pre-pass. Yeah. Speaker pre-pass? Yeah. Um, 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 how do I say it? Did I say Jones? Or, or... Oh, uh, for what you can call me, uh, Jones, Professor Jones, Dave, David, uh, Hefe. I like Hefe. I go by Professor Hefe. The reason why is there's a metric fuck ton of David Joneses, even in the professor world. If you go to rate my professor and don't search by school and just say David Jones, look at the list of professors that teach in, uh, with the same name. In high school, I had five teachers, all with last name Jones. One was the football, one was the team coach, a speech teacher, a history teacher, so everyone just default to Jones history, Jones. That's funny. When I went to high school, there was even another David Jones in high school, and he's one of the fucking jocks, and I clearly wasn't. And the motherfucker wrote better English papers than me. How do I know? Because they fucked our files up, and I got all his English papers in my folder, and he got all mine. Poor guy. All right, so while you guys are doing that... <coughs> Ooh. If you can do Visual Studio 2022, do it. I don't know if there's issues with code or not. I haven't tried using code. Uh, so you have to, like, download more software. there's more to download. Yeah. All right. Slideshow. I want you guys to know a little bit about me. I'm from here. I'm a former COS student. I attended here in like, oh, fuck, 2007 or 8 to 2012. I was here a while. I started off uh, only going nights because I worked in accounting in Fresno for the Catholic Church. Uh, it's called the diocese. It's the headquarter for all the churches in like 150 mile radius, like up to Merced and down to Bakersfield and shit. Uh, I used to be Christian. Uh, working for the Catholics cured me of that. I'm now an atheist. Uh, but I started here and I wanted to be a programmer. That's what I came back to school for. Uh, and this semester I started taking programming courses here. There was an adjunct. It was not Mr. Redden who does a good job, even though I will bad mouth him for the rest of the semester. It's going to be the last time you hear me say he did a good job. Uh, he wasn't teaching. I had an adjunct. He was just terrible and made me change my majors. I chose mathematics. My main job here is a mathematics teacher. I graduated here and went to UC Merced. Uh, where I graduated with a 4.0 in applied math and physics, focusing on optics. I did undergraduate research there using uh, MATLAB. 
the MATLAB uh, computer language. They have another course here taught by Mr. Allen, Professor Allen uh, on MATLAB. And from there, I went to UC Santa Cruz and did applied mathematics and statistics uh, where I studied, most of it was astrophysics. As an intern or as a student here, I got an internship to NASA. I worked there a couple summers. Uh, there is a program that NASA does with community college students. They do it every semester. And we have about 10 to 15 students do it every semester. Uh, you work from home for most of the semester with your other classes. And then at the end, if you're doing well, you get to go do something at one of the NASA facilities for like the weekend or the week. <coughs> if you're interested in working for NASA, it's a great way to get your foot in the door and meet some people. And that's my photo when I was at NASA. As I said, I'm a math teacher. I like dogs. I don't have nothing against cats. Uh, I just like my pets to worship me. I also like dogs. When you get home, doesn't matter how fucked your day is, they're happy as hell to see you. And they can like fix damn near anything. They just dance around. They're so excited to see you. My dog's name is Lunar. He's a year and, I don't know, five months right now. The left picture of the day we got him. Uh, and that other picture is like six months ago. He's still a puppy uh, and he's still crazy. He recently found his pee pee and he started blessing all of his toys, which is fun. But he's not doing it to human legs, so that's good. I like superheroes. I like Marvel over DC. I like Superman. Uh, I, I like the old Christopher Reeves movies. And uh, the new guy, The Witcher. What the fuck's his name? Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. He's a good Superman. But they had some bad Supermans in there. Like Brandon Ruth was not a good Superman. Uh, Wonder Woman and Aquaman are great. I didn't think I was going to like Aquaman because he's the worst fucking hero ever. Like, I talked to Fish. You're a loser. Go home. Uh, but they made a really good movie. I prefer the Marvel. I like Iron Man. I like Star-Lord. Fuck Captain America. He plays Frisbee golf with a metal disc. Not impressed. Uh, Black Widow, super hot. I like Groot. Who doesn't like Groot? Visual Studio Code is preferred. Why did you... Hefecito is misleading you those online. Visual Studios 2022 is preferred. Just tricking you guys. All right. But more, I like superhero stuff, but no, let me rephrase it. I like superpowers. Superheroes, that whole do good shit, eh, most of us wouldn't be that way. If you've never seen The Boys, you're missing out on a good show. It's on Amazon Prime. It's what the super or like the DC, the Justice League would be like if they were real people. With no like no truth, justice, the American way. No, there's some good guys. There's some bad guys. There's some just. I don't know, bad guys, but bad is relevant to who you're talking to here. I love the voice. It's a great show. I'm a big fan of villains in general. They're more interesting. Villains are more interesting. The hero is always dragged into being a hero, usually against their will. The villain starts with a fucking purpose. They want to accomplish something with their life. And it's usually something big, grand. They don't want to own a fucking local store. They want to take over the goddamn world. They've got, they're motivated and they're driven. I got respect for that. Heroes are just like, they're reactive. Eh. Big Bang Theory, I love comedies. I didn't watch this for the longest time. Uh, friends finally told me, why not? Why are you not watching this? You're one of the characters. And I kind of am. I'm like a blend of all the characters. I, I play D&D, &D, video games, all that good stuff. Studied physics, all that. Uh... I like all the comedies. I like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I like The Office. I like uh, 30 Rock. I like The Neighborhood, Odd Couple, all sorts of good shows. 
what we do in the shadows. If I could be a vampire, I would. I want to live forever and see what like the future holds. I would probably make a very good vampire because then I have a hard, hard time catching a meal, but I'd still do it if I could become a vampire. That's my report from Kindle this year for my reading for 2023. I read a fucking shitload of books. I had no idea I read that many books last year. I read, God damn it, man. Is that showing up up there? Yeah. Uh, I read a lot. I read at night when I'm going to bed. I usually read for a couple hours, but sometimes it's like three or four hours. Sometimes it's fucking three in the morning. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I can't believe how late it is. I prefer fantasy and stuff, but I will read sci-fi. Uh, someone online said they like reading literature and history and math. And I thought, you're a sick fuck. <laughs> I I'm a, I got a master's degree in mathematics and I don't like reading math. It fucking is you? Yeah. You're a sick <laughs> fuck. Wait, history's cool. It doesn't have to be history's cool. cool. Math is not. Okay, doing the like the grunt work and staring at an equation for four hours sucks, but like but reading we, about math and stuff that, that it does, that's cool. You'll have to send me something that you think is cool to read about mathematics. Because I'm just picturing textbooks and it just makes me want to give you an F now. <laughs> mathematician biography though. What? Like mathematician biography. Read that. That's kind of, that would be kind of interesting. I would like to read about some of that, but she's got the time. All right. Uh, onward. Uh, I told you like fantasy. This is, I started reading lit RPG lately. That's why how this I got fucking 57 books last year. They're all on Kindle Unlimited for fucking free. If you pay $12.99 a month or $11.99 a month, you read as much as you want. And I have. I used to read a lot as a kid. I didn't read a lot in my until a couple of years ago. My mom was getting old and she wanted to use Kindle. She liked to read. I got Kindle Unlimited for her on my account so I could just buy her books when she wanted and got her that and when she, she passed away not last year but the year before i said you know what fuck it i'll i'll use her kindle unlimited until the month expires and then i didn't fucking stop reading i love this series this is fucking a really really good series it's kind of like ready player one but i think it's way fucking better than ready player one uh and it's even better on audio the audio book is fantastic anyone know what that is it's the Lich King. I uh, like MMOs. I haven't played WoW. This is World of Warcraft. I haven't played it in a while. I think the Panda Edition was the last one I played. Uh, I don't know where they're at now. Uh, but I did play the very first edition where it's called Vanilla WoW now. Uh, back in the day, you could take 40 people in dungeons on raids. And we didn't have like Zoom or like visual video, but we had audio. So we were all on headsets and shit. And I got to be the raid leader. Uh, the opening weekend, we literally died to the dude at the fucking door to the dungeon for eight hours straight. He just fucking slaughtered us for eight hours straight. That bouncer took us out. Uh, and we only played on Saturdays. We were a little fucking humiliated. I was a student at the time. Uh, we come back. Within six months, we got down to two hours. The entire dungeon took two hours. Why do I say that? I told you I'd work for now. I, said, I got stuff through the school. They asked for internship or leadership experience. And I had worked in the accounting department, not as a leader, but just like as an accounts receivable clerk. And I was a student. I wasn't like not elected to any leadership position. But I thought, it's fucking NASA. There's, there's got to be a bunch of fucking nerds. If there's any gamers anywhere, NASA's got them. So I put it on there as leadership experience. Raid leader for World of Warcraft. I don't know that it worked. But I was the only math guy of like 150, 200 engineering students. So that got selected for the internship there. I don't know. Uh, I interned there a couple summers. This is the first summer. Uh, it was, these, they were both at Ames Research Center. Uh, this is in Mountain View, which is near San Jose. Mesa is going to be hosting a field trip there on April 19th. Uh, I've been arranging in contact with the people I've worked there and got it all set up and 
you'll find out more details about it through Mesa or Seta if you attend that kind of stuff. The first summer, they were both at Ames. This is called Sustainability Base. It's a building. It's like a mock-up of a lunar build, a building for the moon, except the windows open. Uh, it generates all its own electricity. It recycles like 98, 99% of its water. It's like, so it's like self-contained. It does everything. It's got sensors for heat and wind and all that shit everywhere around the building. There's no AC in that motherfucker because the building is a smart building and it goes, okay, where's the wind coming from? Which windows should I open so the breeze will come through and keep it at a nice cool temperature? And then it opens the windows for you. The windows were automatic, which was fucking scary the first time I heard it. Because mm -hmm. while the windows and the tech was good, it was those old archaic motors that like really fucking scary. I worked for them studying. Uh, I was using computer code like Perl and different things like that. I had to learn it all, like what I needed to know in like a week or two, uh, watching videos on Google because I didn't know any of that shit. At the time, uh, we were trying to reduce electrical load, like make sure everything turned off when it needed to, like all the outlets turned off. We actually found some problems. Second summer I was there was the Aero Mechanics Branch. Ames Research Center has an 80 by 120 foot wind tunnel. It's one of the biggest in the world. Uh, it's so big, the sides can open up and they can pick up Boeing 747 with a crane and put it inside the building and test it. The walls, one wall has, is like a giant vent. The other wall is filled up with fans that are like, you could like that wall right there is maybe two fans that are that big. And it's just like this entire half cylinder of fans and it blows wind like super high, like super fast. And there's little spots where little metal tubes come up and they let smoke out and they can track where the smoke is going over like the planes and whatever. That's fucking expensive. To lift up a 747 is expensive. Uh, they'd rather do it with coding. So I was working in the uh, Aaron Kinex branch setting that on computer code there. I used Perl and what else did I use with this? I don't remember. I got to use their supercomputer. Uh, this is the a cross-sectional of a helicopter blade. The Air Mechanics Branch just doesn't do just space shuttles because it's NASA, but airplanes and helicopters and shit like that too. And they're all the they all these all the helicopter blades have this teardrop shape. Some are more curved than others, and and you can tip the angle that the blades move when they're spinning. The the angle of that blade tips. So you want to have it at the right angle to generate the most lift with the least amount of drag. And that's what we were experimenting with. Different shapes, different angles. Uh, that it, the wind is hitting it and, and checking this, lifting this drag. Some of these boxes are here on the left and really far away from the helicopter blade are really big. The closer you get to it, more shit's going on and they make the boxes smaller. It's called discretizing the domain. This is something you'll do in programming and stuff if you ever do applied stuff. Uh, and we were doing complicated shit there. It was really interesting, but I found out as much as I wanted to work for NASA, I didn't want to do it for a living. Like waiting for the computer for two hours to do the supercomputer shit. It's just sitting around waiting for two hours suck. <clears throat> I would walk around helping engineering students with their shit because I didn't remember their math. It was great. Uh, I told you I went to Santa Cruz and I studied astrophysics in the applied math branch <clears throat> astrophysics the study of the sun and stars and shit these are three different time shots of a tube of plasma in the sun the sun is filled with plasma and believe it or not it's like a giant bowl of spaghetti in that motherfucker how liquid stays in little tubes of plasma i don't know but it does different properties of magnetism and stuff like that holding together different different tubes and with the right magnetic properties, even though they all have roughly the same overall density, the magnetic properties can make it less dense and cause it to rise to the surface. So this is a tube of plasma rising to the surface, and that's how we get solar flares. Uh, this is a time shot of it going up, and it was it like like water pouring down your head. It like 
comes down like this, flows down. These little things are like little eddies underneath where it's swirling underneath. And what it's like as it's rising up to the top. Santa Cruz had a supercomputer as well. That thing would run for fucking eight hours. Eight hours. And then for a long ass time, it would spit out NAN. Does anyone know what NAN means? Well, I wouldn't expect you to because this is Seaside One, but you might have heard it. NAN means not a number. You will probably get that result on occasion when you're doing something in here. NAN means not a number. It told me my shit didn't work. It didn't give me an image, nothing. Eight hours. They could have told me the shit right away, but they did. It took me two years to find out what was fucking wrong with it. Had to get my advisors to help. I was building off graduate students' work who got his PhD. And the motherfucker didn't have gravity in his program. Gravity was set to zero. The only thing that makes life, like, well, not the only thing, but one of the things that gives life on this planet a fucking chance. The sun's gravity keeps us in its loop right at the right area. So we have nice temperatures. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. He didn't have gravity turn on, but it turned me off of going into programming further. Uh, but I am qualified to teach. Uh, during the program or during the pandemic, I took CSI one and two again. Oh, for the first time here with uh, Professor Redden, just so I would know the, the specific C++ code. Uh, and that's how I'm teaching you guys here. Next slide. I like food. Favorite food is Mexican food. My wife likes tamales, but a hell of a lot more than I do. They can be dry. Half the time they're good, half the time they're not. I like a good enchilada or taco. Uh, oh yeah, I'll tear up Mexican food. We're having chicken tacos tonight. Fuck, I didn't need to think about that yet. I'm hungry now. I like Starbucks. I used to, on the weekends, on Saturdays, tutor my students at Starbucks. And starting this last fall, Mesa has actually employed me to come to school on Saturdays. So on 9 to 12, not this weekend, but every other weekend the rest of the semester, except for when I'm in Texas, one weekend, I will be in the Mesa Center from 9 to 12 on Saturday, which is right downstairs, the other side of the building. Uh, if you want, you can come in for any topic just to study or ask for help. You're more than welcome to come. Who's that? You can't sit in anymore. Darth Maul? Really? Wait, what if I tell you, what if I tell you I do this? Anakin you know. Skywalker? I'll take Anakin Skywalker. Darth Vader is a no. That's what Rebel Scum calls him. He's Lord Vader. I like villains. Light Luke Skywalker was a little bitch in episode four. He was terrible. He's a whiner. All he does is whine. Vader's first scene. Someone mouths off to him and he fucking chokes him with the force. Villains are way better. But everybody likes Yoda, even the people that prefer villains. Everybody, they, if you watch Star Wars, everyone likes Yoda. Uh, he got a quote from episode two. He's bitching at Luke for, I told you to teach new Jedi and you taught him how to use the force and lightsaber and shit, but you didn't teach him how to fail. So, which means you done fucked up because the best lessons are in failure. You guys are going to fucking fail all the time in here. I'm going to fail in here in front of you all the fucking time. Your job is going to be to help me catch it. You know why? Because it's really easy to make errors. We're going to talk about errors later on today. There's all sorts of errors you can make with the right IDE, Integrated Development Environment, uh, it will like warn you when you have an error before you try to click run. Uh, some of them don't, uh, but you'll have errors. And then it's finding your errors is called debugging. I'm going to make errors in here all the time. When you make errors, don't get discouraged. If you take you fucking, your friend does a, a homework assignment in 15 minutes, and it takes you fucking three hours. You're probably going to learn that shit a lot better than they are. There's a lot of learning going on in failure. Don't let it ruin your day. 
I like video games. This is, does anyone know who this is? Samus. Samus. I like Metroid a lot. Grew up on Nintendo. Uh, I'm looking forward. I hear there's a new one coming out soon. I hope so. I have the PlayStation 5, the PlayStation 4 is in a box. The 3 is in the living room hooked up for like a DVD player. I have a Switch. I have a Wii in a box. Uh, Game Boy and Game Something in a box. I'm a gamer. This is Zelda. Uh, this is the Breath of the Wild. I didn't buy it for a long time because I didn't like the colors. All the previews, like it looked like it'd be fun, but the colors look like shit. And, but it had such high reviews all the fucking time and I finally got it and I loved it. If you've never played this, that little thing right there in the back is a tower. It is really fucking far away. I'm on a motorcycle that you can like, with all the DLC, the downloadable content, you can eventually acquire. Uh, but if you're actually not on a motorcycle and you're running to that tower, it's probably 30 minutes real time to just run there. That's how far you can see in Zelda. If you play video games, you're used to having zoning where or fog of war or something. It only shows so far and then it has to zone. It loads up the new area because it takes a lot of resources and memory. Video games take memory in the computer. We're going to talk about memory and shit in this class as well. They sacrifice color for having an entire fucking world. It was crazy. I loved it. Uh, then Tears of the Kingdom came out last year. And was it last Christmas? Not this Christmas, but the previous one? Ah, sometime then. Yeah. Or was it You're May? Going. It was May. It was near finals. I know it was near finals because I had it sitting on my fucking desk uh, wrapped while I was grading finals because I knew if I fucking unwrapped it before I graded finals, I was going to have a bunch of pissed off students asking where their grades are. That's how long I spent playing Tears of the Kingdom. And I didn't do everything. I like to play video games to completion. I was... I just beat it and I was done. I was tired. That's a lot of hours. Probably my video favorite series. Does anyone know what that's from? Dark Souls. That's Dark Souls. I love the Dark Souls series. I didn't try it till Dark Souls 2. Uh, and within the first three seconds, I got an achievement for dying and I got pissed off. I was mad as fuck. It wasn't like I could die to a monster. I walked off an edge trying to see like, you know, sometimes these games, they'll have like hidden loot right near the beginning. I'm looking over the edge to see, and I fucking got too close. I walked right off. And I was fucking mad as fuck because it gave me an achievement for dying. So I was determined to beat this game. And so I crossed the first bridge, and the first dog I saw killed me for like an hour and a half, two hours fucking straight. Just nonstop slaughter. And I finally found a fucking game that I couldn't just mash the buttons and hit attack, attack, attack to win. I have to learn how to dodge, roll. Fantastic game series. Played Elden Ring, done all the endings. I got Sekiro, Shadows Ice twice at home, waiting. That's in that branch. Uh, the Bloodborne's a fucking great game. I like Dark Souls. The DLC for Elden Ring. You don't gotta tell me that shit. Right, bye, guys. I played Witcher 3. I like The Witcher. This is the TV show. It's a good show. I spent over 100 hours on this. Uh, this is from the TV show Lucifer. I love Lucifer. It's a great TV show. I have in-laws that are highly religious. One of them was even in training to be a priest. So when Lucifer got canceled on Fox and they were trying to get picked up, the fans were going on saying save lucifer and shit like that on facebook and i did too and i had some very mad in-laws not understanding that i wasn't a devil worshiper good times great show what's this from yeah. okay the first time i watched walking dead this was the scene that stopped me from watching anymore it's like the end of season six or five Season six. season six and this scene was just like nope this show is no longer about zombies it's just about being horrible to people 
and I stopped watching it. And then there was 11 fucking seasons and spinoff after spinoff are being created. I think it's got more spinoffs than any other fucking show. Even more than CSI, <laughs> which has a lot of spinoffs. My wife and I started binge watching it uh, right around finals a month and a half ago. We're on near this end of season nine. And uh, he's now one of my favorite characters. He's, he's got an interesting character. Arc. His personality is fucking great. That's Negan. Lucille is the bat for those that haven't seen it. I liked the show Dexter. It's about a guy that works for the blood spatter analyst from the Miami Metro Police Department in the day. And in the night, he's a serial killer. Uh, he only kills bad guys, though. He kills people that got through the system and didn't stay in jail when they should have, that were bad enough that they should have stayed in jail, like murderers and rapists. He didn't kill like thieves, but like murderers he would kill. And so if they made it through the system, he worked for them. He knew when they got out of the system, he'd just go fucking slaughter them. It's a good show. I like Game of Thrones. I read the series before the TV shows were even thought of. And so when I watch it, I, if, has anyone seen Game of Thrones? No. Wow. Only... Shows, but I don't want to watch it at all because I know it ends horribly. It's not that bad of an ending. It's just not as satisfying as everything. Like so many of the beginning, the, the first like six seasons were all really solid. The seventh one just isn't as good. And by comparison, it makes it look weak. But it wasn't like a bad ending. It just was like quick. What? My cousin, she just told me about the show. I knew what was going to happen in several of the scenes in this. So, like, I would watch my wife when I knew something horrible was going to happen. If you've seen it, not very many of you have, like, Red Wedding. When the Red Wedding happens, uh, I watched my wife. She was fucking horrified. My mother in law moved in with us, like, next year. And so, we wanted her to watch Game of Thrones with us. We binge watched all the previous episodes to get her caught up. My mother-in-law watched The Red Wedding and did fucking flinch and made me really nervous to have her in my house because only a psychopath doesn't flinch at that shit. The the yes. There's only one season so far, isn't there? It's so far, I've been meaning to watch it. That's it was good. Okay, cool. You should watch Game of Thrones first. It's like 300 years old. It doesn't matter. It's related to the characters that are in the future. You Game of Thrones is better than House of Dragons. I think so. Yeah, it's more focused on dragons. Uh, if you haven't watched this and you are curious about it because there are dragons and hot chicks in there, do not watch it with children. You've been warned. There's incest, there's rape, there's murder, there's violence, there's war. There's a lot of themes that are inappropriate for children. Hell, yeah, don't do it. I like Survivor. It's a guilty pleasure. I've, I've, I'm ashamed that I like Survivor. Uh, I only bring it up here because some people don't have anything in common with any of the other slides but they like so fucking Survivor. <laughs> uh, I started watching it when I was working at the accounting department. Uh, I worked with all women. And one of the first seasons, like season two or three, was men versus women. And all the ladies I worked with were talking shit. I said, let's take some money on that action. And I started watching it with them. And to be honest, I don't remember who won. I don't remember if it was a guy or a girl, but we've watched it since. I like some anime and stuff like that. Like the Castlevania cartoon or the anime was pretty good. Uh, there's a few I like. I like Pixar, everything Pixar I've liked. I won the Jack Kent Cook Scholarship, transfer scholarship when I was at COS. It will literally pay for everything, like your entire rest of your education. It paid for all of the rest of my bachelor's education and my graduate education. Uh, it is something you can win through, Jack, or through the community college if you earn top grades. Like if you... I think might have some people that are 3.5 and around there, but most of them are like 3.8 on up. Uh, and also you need to have financial need. And a lot of people at community college do. 
The reason why I brought them up is because, first off, it's good to know that you can win a scholarship that will pay for the rest of your education. And if you are interested in applying for it later on when you're transferring, let me know and I'll help you out. Uh, but also, when I went to the first scholars weekend, the first guy I met there was an animation artist. And we sat and chatted for hours, just me and him. Uh, we were a little bit older than the rest of the students, so we chatted for a while. And now he works for Pixar and Disney. He's one of like the leads. Might even be a supervisor at this point. He's put shit up on Facebook all the time. He's pr he's like proud of knowing someone that has worked for NASA, and I'm fucking proud of knowing someone that does like this kind of shit. So it's it's a cool friendship. He's a right. He turned into a writer during the pandemic. He wrote six fucking novels during the pandemic, and I'm a beta reader for him right him right now. When I went to Santa Cruz, I wanted to get my PhD because of this motherfucker, Dr. Jones, Indiana Jones. I really like the Indiana Jones movies, except Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. I think that's what it's called. It was the crystal. It was, it was the shitty one with aliens. They done fucked that shit up. I don't know why they brought aliens into it. Indiana Jones was generally about religion. And then Dial of Destiny came out. And I was really worried. We watched that like three weeks ago on Disney Plus. And it was about a mathematician. I said, fuck yeah! I got all excited. I'm screaming at the TV. I can be really loud when I want to. I will reference this scene more than once in this class. When I fuck up something or someone's got a really good idea for something in the code, I will say clever girl. Even though I only see one of you in here. I will say clever girl, no matter, no matter who I'm talking to. Don't be offended. It's not a gender thing. It's a fucking philosopher after thing. And if you are offended by being a clever girl, you should just quit being a fucking misogynist or whatever the fuck the word that is. Women are just as smart and good as we are. I like time travel. You learn about it in physics, go down the physics route, you learn about time travel. It's possible. You just can't go backwards, spoiler alert. This was from Back to the Future. I really like those shows too. I play d and I play on the weekends. I'm playing tomorrow. I used to play in Fresno. Uh, I got my wife to play. Now she's the fucking insane ranger that just... Her name, she named her character Ophelia. I got her name, her character Ophelia, because we could make her character's nickname Opie for being overpowered. She's fucking just broken. Uh, this is Tiamat, five-headed dragon god. I like the quote because it's a twist on the old Skittles, Taste the Rainbow. So if, if I call anyone in here a nerd or a geek, don't take offense. I'm a, probably a bigger one than you are. I do like some cool shit. Does anyone recognize this logo? Yes. It's the Rolling Stones. Kiss is a good guess. It's got lips. It's Rolling Stones. I like rock and roll. Uh, that genre has widened from many decades or just a little few years to many decades over the years i would say i didn't grow up with the rolling stones but since they're still around and still doing shit i did but i wasn't like i wasn't alive when they were in their heyday uh i like other shit though i like country and all sorts of music i only listen to so much country like i like garth brooks and shit like that my wife loves country, but I think you can only listen to your wife leaving you and your dog dying and the house being taken away with a fucking tornado so many times before you're like, this is the same song. Uh, I did take my wife to the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, and I think his name's Chris Jensen, played Buy Me a Boat. That fucking song is great. It's catchy as fuck. I, I know because I sang it for the next fucking four days in the car. We were touring the country. Uh And I love this quote from Henry Ford. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Your mindset is going to determine pretty much how well you do in this class. I don't think I could dunk a basketball. That doesn't mean I can't. I think, yeah, I'm sure if I were willing to put in the work, lose enough weight, practice my vertical jump, even my five and a half foot ass could eventually figure out how to get high enough to get to that rim. But I don't think I can do it, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put in the effort to do it. That's usually the deciding factor. If you don't think you can do it, 
you fucking set the future because you won't try hard enough to learn how to do it. So whatever you think it is that you want to accomplish, go for it. Someone said they wanted to be an astronaut. You can be a fucking astronaut. Go for it. We have NASA shit I was talking about here. When the next thing starts up for the NASA program that they do with community college students, I will let you guys know about it. Uh, take a gander at it, okay? That should be it for the slideshow. Now you know a little bit about me. For those of you that haven't done Introduce Yourself, which was due yesterday, please still do it. You don't have to do put more than your name. You don't even have to say, hi, my name is. You could just put your name on the Introduce Yourself. But the more you put, the more I know you about you, the more your peers will know about you. You might make friends, find some overlapping interests. And when it comes to like writing letters of recommendation, shit like that, I know more about you to make your letter interesting. Because another fucking letter that says, oh yeah, they were in my class, they got an A, isn't a good letter of recommendation. It's actually a terrible letter of recommendation because that's boring. Almost every letter of recommendation says A or B on it. Students that get C's generally don't ask for that letter. So you don't have anything special unless I know something about you. And then I'll customize your letter for you. Make it very personal, uh, stuff like that. And if it's too personal, I'll share it with you before I send it out so you can give your thumbs up and say, yeah, that's okay. I don't mind if you share that. Enough of that slideshow. So that between talking about the IDEs in the beginning and me just jibber jabbering about myself for fucking 35 minutes, it's been almost an hour. Does anyone need a break? Like a five minute break to stretch your legs, go to the bathroom, get a drink or anything? All right, let's do it. I'm gonna pause this video. So the people watching it later don't get bored. All right, we're back. Oh God, I just saw this. Speaking of horror shit, this little like camera I have on my laptop, y'all can't see. My camera in my laptop, half the time Zoom doesn't like it. So I got this other, my friend said, get this laptop. It says Papa Look, which reminds me of Baba Duke. It looks like Baba Duke's fine. That was a fun little scary movie. All right. <clears throat> back to our class uh we have face-to-face -face and online students present you guys will pretty much have the same thing the whole way other than testing is a little different uh for the online students make sure you check announcements all the time i will post in announcements the code that i do in class i will copy and paste there after i'm doing it so you have the resource to look at later on uh but if i'm absent for any reason or whatever uh, you'll see stuff here. If you want to learn about the NASA thing, I'm going to post it here. Syllabus tab has the syllabi. We'll go over in specific in a second. Also, along with the lecture topics and exam dates. <coughs> with that, I'll be going over live. We'll talk about more about the exams in a second. Let's take a look at the syllabus. So it tells you right away, we have classes from three to five. You already knew that. On Tuesdays, you don't have to show up, but if you do, you can participate and learn and gain from it. 7.15 to 8.15 p.m. on Zoom. I'm gonna be sitting there answering questions and helping students with their work and shit like that. Or if we don't finish a lecture topic that we need to finish on Friday, I'm gonna use that extra time to do it then. And I'm going to record the video and post it. So again, if you can't make it during those hours, you don't have to because it will be posted. Uh, but 7.15 to 8.15. I have classes till 6. It takes a little while to get home. And my wife usually wants to eat dinner. Uh, so 7.15 is the best I can do when I get home. Or I could do morning, but most students have classes in the morning. That's bad for you guys. You don't have to buy a textbook. Uh, there is a nice little text online program. I do pledge to do my best to help each and every one of you do your best in this class, but it is all on you. I will show you how to walk the walk, but you actually kind of have to put in the miles. Okay, I'll show you how to do everything. I'll work with you to help find your bugs and stuff like that. 
as will Juan. Uh, I was just talking about my hours. Juan, would you like to talk about your hours for the students? Uh, yes. Uh, if you guys know, I'm going to have five students. Uh, so basically, I conduct group, uh, group study. But if you guys just ever want to take any homework or just to take the show or just my office my office hours my uh, kind of class hours would be every Mondays and Wednesdays right after CS2 which is from six to eight or six your to hours are six to eight yeah six to eight in this uh, very same room so just Mondays and Wednesdays uh, I strongly do recommend you guys to uh, check out the discord a lot of the times a lot of the students can't really make their class and they might lose material and then test time comes up and they're kind of lost and so they ask me a lot of questions and they kind of check in with me. And uh, usually I respond within 24 hours. So I'm, I'm pretty timely with that. Uh, if not, Professor Jones is also on there. So, yeah, I uh, slum it. Yeah, <laughs> check it out. Um, you don't really have to pay for anything in this class. Uh, I don't think the homework is assigned here as a grade. No. Uh, it's not, but please do, do the homework. Uh, I strongly recommend it. Uh, without the homework, you're not going to get the practice. You're not going to know what to do by the time you get to the test. And if you struggle with the homework, uh, you know, come to my uh, my SI. <laughs> uh, just last thing, uh, as a statistic, just to convince you guys even further, I guess. I think it's like a, a pretty high statistic. It's like 80% of students who go to SIs end up getting an A. So if you guys, like uh, Mr. Jones says, I'll teach you how to do the walk to walk and everything. But I, I can... Almost guarantee you guys an A if, if you do if you do go. So just push that on. Oh, challenge accepted. I can make sure they don't. <laughs> no, that's fucking bullshit. I the, you hear horror stories of teachers that grade on a bell curve where like only two students can get an A or some bullshit like that. I'm sure there might still be some university level teachers that do that. I don't know for certain if it's still current. That's an old fucking thing to do. I hope no one at COS does it because it's some bullshit. If you get a fucking 98% and earn an AA plus, but two, a couple other students got 199 and you don't give a student an A, you're just a piece of shit human being, not to mention a fucking piece of shit instructor. But you might be a great instructor. You apparently did a good job because they all got good grades. But if you're giving out fucking Bs to a 98%, you should probably get taken out back and shot. That's my opinion. Links to the Discord over here on the left. I have a uh, Discord channel as well. There is a CSCI Discord group for COS as well that has former students talking about similar problems and people that have done this stuff before. And they're all like in there. Uh, some of them are still in there and they'll answer questions too. But uh, either Juan's Discord or my Discord. I would say Juan's because I don't know that Juan joined mine. And so if you're in Juan's, you'll have access to both of us, whoever answers first. I do get on Discord a lot. <coughs> Unlike Mr. Redden, who's teaching Seaside 2 in fall, he's on, uh, on Discord, but active. No. All right, back to our syllabi here. Uh, there is a couple drop dates in the class. If you drop by January 29th, which I know doesn't give you fucking jack shit time to decide if you like this class. Uh, you won't have to pay for it. There will be nothing that shows up on your transcripts. If you stick through January 29th, go through March 22nd, you can withdraw for a W on your transcript. It says W. <laughs> it doesn't hurt your GPA, but I think it affects financial aid. Uh, but after that, you will get what you earn. The only form of charity in terms of grades in this class is I round up. You do not need to email me if Canvas says you have an 89.5%. Will I, can I please get an A, Mr. Jones? Trust me that you will not have a B on your transcript. I will round up where appropriate, okay? This is the first semester I've ever said that because every semester after finals, I'm fucking trying to grade finals. And as soon as I've got one class is posted, I'm getting request for can I do extra credit or can you bump my grade but if I just address that now I round up I know how to round uh if you need extra testing time uh for like the in-class test stuff like that or other stuff you can see if you qualify uh you can go to the AAC 
Uh, the Access and Ability Center will help people with uh, specific needs. Uh, and so you can find out more information there. We will be talking a lot on Discord server. We have synchronous Zoom sessions, which you can watch asynchronously. Before the pandemic, that was not a word in my vocabulary. Asynchronous was not something I ever had to fucking care about. Uh, please feel free to stay in touch with us. I was going to say they have loaner laptops and stuff, but I've been told that they're out already. So check at your own whim if you need one. Uh, grading policies. The lab assignments do not count towards your grade, but are fundamental to your mastery of this material. I have given far more assignments than even necessary based on letters, just so you can like look at the name and go, is this assignment sound interesting to me? Does it sound interesting? You do a different assignment, but do something where you get practice with the skills and this stuff. You don't have to do any of these assignments yourself. You can run with your own program, create your own fucking thing and go with that. As long as you're practicing, practicing the skills and mastering it, I'll find out on test day. If you ever want you, uh, if you do the homework and you want to ask questions about it, you can always bring them on the Tuesday nights from 715. You can email me and stuff like that. If you do, I have a format request, put last name, first name, and then module number. CPP is the file extension for C++. Uh, that way, like, this isn't so much important for like sending me your homework, but when on exam days, when you're submitting stuff for your files there, everybody's just gonna have the same exam file name if I don't say like, put your name. So please put your name on your files when you submit them. Uh, even though you're not getting graded on homework, you will be graded on some stuff. Online, there's a quiz at the end of each module. Uh, it's based on stuff in class and in the reading. You have like two hours, so fucking have the textbook open. I don't care. Read from the textbook while you're going. It's actually, you can get, let's see, do they? I also have another link for a textbook you can get from like Amazon that's like five bucks. It's really fucking good that I use in C++ or the, the second class. Uh, quizzes are 10%. And you have like a week after I'm done teaching the module to do it. Sometimes the modules take a little bit longer. Exams, there's two exams in this class. For students online, all your shit's online. Uh, for students that are face-to-face, -face, we will have an in-class portion where you will come in here, you'll be able to log into the computer, do, do a something very much like the quiz on Canvas. And then you'll also have a paper thing where you won't have a computer. And it's just like the, the problems are simpler than writing your own code, but it's like how much do you remember of the code without having the screen and the IDE fixing all your errors in front of you, okay? Uh, and then you will have a couple coding assignments. So having done some homework and stuff like that, we'll make sure you're pretty well prepared for it. Uh, I will on exam weeks, even though we're in person on Fridays, the, the coding stuff will be available from Wednesday until Sunday night at 10 PM. So it's not like you have to do it in one day or one hour or, you know, something like that. You got, you know, half a week to do it. Each exam is worth 30%, so 60% total. Uh, when you do submit it, please do last name, first name, exam number, question number, like that format. Even if you have to change it after, you know, copy the file when you're done working with it, whatever you've got, just change the name when you submit it. Uh, you are permitted to cry on, on all exams. I will bring tissue. I even have a bottle that says tears of my students. No one's ever cried into it for me. It's very disappointing. I got it in my first year of teaching from a student and no one's ever used it appropriately. Hopefully someone in here will be my first. <coughs> Final exam has the exact same format as the other exams. The in-person component is on May 17th, the Friday. Uh, and you'll have, it says Thursday. I need to change that to Wednesday. I want it to be like the other ones. So you have the same amount of time. 
Code of student contact, don't cheat. Using AI is cheating. Chat GPT is fucking cheating. Mr. Redden will tell you you should use Chat GPT. I want to slap the shit out of him when he tells students that. It is a great resource for ideas. It is a terrible thing for you wanting to go into the computer science field. Most people in this class either are in a field that uses it or actually want to be a computer scientist, work in computer science. Who in here wants to do like a career in computer science? Few hands, not as many hands up as I thought, or y'all got like little T-Rex baby arms. You're like, eh, I can't fucking raise my arm. <clears throat> You're not getting chat with GPT when you go in for an interview. They're going to ask you to code straight up on the fucking spot. And I go up to the board and write down the code for this. And they're expecting it to be exact. Uh, you don't have access to that when you're going for a job. Don't fucking use it as a crutch for now. It's okay to look at it for an idea. But if you copy and paste it, I can try. There are ways to check, like chat zero checks for using AI to create programs. But I'm just going to let you fuck yourself over. I'll give you credit for doing it. Have fun in Seaside too when you're, when you're may not, or when you go on to computer science. Don't cheat yourself. Learn the code. It's not that hard. And you've got some great resources. Me and Juan know what we're doing. I asked Juan to come back. He was my SI last semester and he did such a good job. He got to come back. Having said that, uh, the grading schedule, the syllabus is also in here. There is, oh, I am going to be absent Friday, April 5th. Uh, if I don't finish module eight on March 29th, I will give you videos from my last semester showing you how to finish it up. It is my 20th anniversary this year, and my anniversary is the same week as the solar eclipse in fucking Texas. And I've never seen the sun blackened out in the middle of the fucking day. And I think that's fucking like, I need me some religion in my life. That's how the gods were born. You're just out there fucking working the fields. The fucking invaders from the next tribe over attacked you. You're fucking building up your place. You know, and all of a sudden, the fucking sun disappears for three minutes. They're like, oh my God, there's fucking gods. And that's how religion was born. I kind of want to experience that. So I, me and my wife are doing that for our 20th anniversary. <coughs> That's it for the syllabus. It's got a bunch of cool things we're going to be doing listening down here. Well, I don't know if they're cool. It's what we're doing. It's available on the syllabus tab. Uh, and where you'll go for most of your work is in modules. If you want to miss class, if you need to miss class because you're sick, but want to attend, like some of the online students. Right now, there are seven online students in class sitting watching, even though they could watch it later as a video. Uh, you can click on Hefe Zoom Room and it'll take you here. So if you're sick and you want to stay home, but you still want to like attend, because I'll answer questions if you ask over, over Zoom. Uh, our modules, I want you to go through the orientation module this first week. Uh, there are two different, you guys should only be able to see one of these, the introduce yourself module. It's broken up by the different groups in this class. There is an extra credit assignment on maintaining your integrity. It's watch a short video and then give your feedback on it. It's worth the equivalent of one quiz. So like it's extra credit though. So like it'll help make up a spot on like if you miss a quiz or something like that, or it can help bolster your grade. And it's to get you to thinking about like not cheating and what it means to you, what your integrity is worth to you. Module one, we're going to look at some of the stuff right now. Syllabus quiz, you should have that. It's a quiz you can do. As soon as you've read the syllabus, you can have the syllabus open and looking at it while you're doing it. The idea behind that is there are so many things that are answered in the syllabus. Whoever in here ever reads the fucking syllabus? I still want to call bullshit, even though you're my SI. Yes, because there's always a quiz. That you have to take on it. When there's a quiz, you read it. But if there's no quiz, has anyone ever read the fuck? I didn't. 
I didn't read it. I might have skimmed it. I read the ones for my other classes for to get the dates for the exams and stuff so I could plan around it, but then they didn't give me any. So, so here's not everyone does. does. Some people wing it. Mr. Ren will wing it. When you take Seaside 2 in fall, he'll give you a time frame. The test will probably be somewhere in these two to three weeks, I think. But he kind of wings how much he covers each day. Uh, you'll still learn a lot from him. But don't expect a, a time schedule. Redden wings it. I think he wings it. He always looks like he wings it. But sometimes he seems prepared for shit that I don't think he should have been prepared for if he is winging it. Would you agree that's a fair assessment, Juan? You've had Mr. Red. Yeah, um, kind of. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't go in by like a specific word. He just goes by, did he teach it okay? Maybe one. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, if you've installed your IDE, we're going to walk through something right now. I'm going to actually open up this intro and see out. Oh, it doesn't have the code that I want to do. I'm going to just type up my own code. So I am going to come over here and minimize all this shit and open up Visual Studios. When you create a new project, look, the finals are all right here. Uh, you want to do an empty project and you want to make sure this is set to C++ because that's the language we're working in. Set that to C++. Uh, start with an empty project. Let's call this uh, CSI 001, Spring 24, uh, Introduction. This should be the screen or a screen like this will appear. If you don't see Solution Explorer on your screen when you get it, you can always click on View. And Solution Explorer is right there and it'll pop up. Uh, Solution Explorer is a good spot. Uh, source files are where the computer code runs. So we're going to go to a source, fi source files. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say Add. Add new item. You wanted to do a C++ file, the CPP. We will do header files later on at the end, but you don't need anything else here. Down here is the name. I'm going to call it the same naming module I wanted for you guys, but this is a lecture, so we'll call it lecture 01. Click add. It gives me a blank area. Okay, so some things you need. Uh, something that you'll want to have. Well, a good thing to have when you're writing code, especially for classes. The double forward slash like this, if you do two in a row, it switches it to comment, which does not run code. It's just for people reading it, like yourself or your instructor or your team that you're working with. Uh, if you do it with Visual Studios 2022, the line turns green after the second one. You can see it's white right now. It turns green when you did the second one. What's your name? Jones, lecture one. Uh, what is it? January 21st, January 19th, 2024. And we're going to do the uh, Hello World lecture. Make sure I touch on everything I want to rather than just bullshitting my way through. All right. First thing you need to have it is include with a hashtag and in carrots say IO stream. Like that. Carrots. The carrot bracket, or I think carrot's the one that goes up, right? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. The triangle brackets. This one, the same greater than. 
the less than greater than brackets. <laughs> that works. That works for me. Uh, include this. Uh, this is like uh, it's a preprocessor directive. It's before processing is done. And uh, what's going on here is it's telling it what library to go grab. IO stream stands for input output stream. Input is from keyboard usually. Output is defaults to monitor. To screen. Not to a file or screen. Another good thing to use is using namespace std and you end it with a semicolon. STD is the standard library. Uh, the reason why we do this, you're not going to explore a lot of stuff with namespaces, probably until later on in Seaside 2, near the end of the course, really. But if you've got a bunch of different people working together and they're all linking to the same project, you've all created your own personal library of code to use for this. Everybody has their, you can have their own namespace. And then when you want to access commands in their library, you can access it by putting the name of their library in front as a default. In the green text right there in the parrots, uh, is that a, that like, Give a command that will be recognized. No, this is just talking about what this is over here. Oh, so this is like a description. Yeah, it's a description right there. Includes it as a preprocessor directive, and what it's doing is it's telling to include the library of IO stream. Uh, there are other ones we will include throughout the semester. C math is one. It's good for having uh, math commands like power exponents and shit like that. Uh, you can have IO manip. IO manip is good. We'll have that later on. IO manip stands for IO manipulate or in, input output stream manipulate. Uh, you'll do stuff with other namespaces, but not so much for now. Those are pretty much the only two that you have in the beginning. That's all you really need for a little while. And then we usually have something like this. This is the most simple project pro or set of right there. The setup I'm putting in comments, main is a function, just like in mathematics. You take an algebra, there's functions. The way it is shown is it, it's the output format. That's the end. And then main, or then in the name of the function is main. And void, or then you have the input for the function, which in this case is void, which means there is no input. As we go through the semester, you will learn how to create your own functions where you will want it to do an input and stuff like that, like uh, you can make your own squaring function. You throw in five and it returns 25. So this is the main program. This is where all the code is run from. Notice some of these are in blue. There are known words in C++. You have to use them as they're intended. You cannot use them for variable names. Uh, so some words, are restricted for usage to commands and things like that and can't be used as a variable. We'll talk about variables more on next Friday. But like on a function, you have like f of x equals so and so, and then when you did like f of two, you'd spit out a value and you get the value. That's what this is like. 
So like if we had f of x equals x cubed, and then you went and did f of one, uh, that's boring, f of two equals eight, Two is the input, eight is the output, and f is the name of the function. It's just like mathematics. So int, what is int? Int stands for integer. Numbers without decimals. We'll go more into that later on. On Tuesday, or next Friday, we will cover the variable types. That is a type of variable, and integer is a variable type. Uh, but just so you like, it's here on the screen. What the fuck is it? Void means no input is necessary. You used to require it. I think you can get away with having that blank nowadays. Is there any time that we'll ever have to change using namespace to something else instead of STD, like the standard library? I'm going to show you why I have STD in just a second, so you'll see why it's there. But there are other, I don't think that you're going to have other namespaces you need in this class. It's like the only one I've ever seen. It's the only one that's, that's the most common one. But like for like an employer, if you're all working together on projects, you're each going to have your own libraries. Oh. So, so if you're sharing libraries, you don't throw them. You guys. Standard library. Though. Yeah. You'll have this, you can have more than one namespace in there. So you have like a private library. <laughs> yeah. You could create your own library of stuff, have it be your library, and then just you do using namespace. Like I could have using namespace Hefe. And then I could have my own library and use shortcut commands like I'm about to share. So we haven't done any actual code yet, but you can always see if this works, even with the base setup. If you're doing Visual Windows Studio, if you do local Windows debugger, it will do everything for you. It will build the program, it will compile the program, and it executes the program. I didn't have anything I was doing, but it shows that it ran. <coughs> All right, let's do our first thing. Every computer language you will ever learn, always the first lecture is the hello lecture, hello world lecture. So this is our hello world lecture. You can do Yeah, I'm going to comment that out for a second. By using this, these two lines are identical. Identical to the system if you have using namespace STD up above, above the main program. It prevents you from having to do this, right? STD all the fucking time. Most things, there's no reason not to use the standard library uh, unless your work really like demands it. But if you go into work in computer science, you're going to be really comfortable with namespaces and shit like that at that point. I would use this every time. Uh, do using namespace STD. So we don't have to. Uh, so now that we already have the using name the SC, a, a, a STD, we don't have to do the CDs uh, two colon. Nope. So it just be C out insertion operator and then uh, quotation mark hello world insertion operator and like. Yep. So C out means print it out. Print the screen or print this line. The default output for the output screen is the monitor. Things we put in quotation marks are called strings. Hello world is a literal string. That's what it's called, a literal string. It's, I'm not using that like, it's literally so-and-so. That's what it's actually, the name of it is. String literal? 
String literal. String literal. Right, that's a little bit better way of saying it. Probably the more accurate way of saying it. Uh, so quotation marks work. Later on, we'll show you how to use quotation marks in stuff you want to print out. Uh, it's not necessary right now. Uh, ENDL stands for end line. End of. end of line. That's some Tron shit right there. Yeah. Tron was a good movie. <laughs> end of line. It lets the computer know that this line of code is done. And it does a carriage return. Maybe we should do that on the next line. Uh, moves to the next line on the output screen. On the output. And this is called a carriage return from back in the day with typewriters. I'm going to comment that out for a second. No, fuck it. I'm going to leave them both in so they both do it. I'm going to hit local Windows debugger up here. I'm going to run it and show you what it's like. And it prints out both. If you have more than one end line separated by these double less than signs, it does an extra carriage return for each one. Now these are separated by the first return to the next line, then two more spaces. What's the definition of hard coding? It's like doing that second line sequencer, hard coding. Is that? Hard coding is like when there's no real input or anything like that. You've like set what it is. It's like a, a really primitive way of setting your code, right? Or yeah, a lot of hard coding. We'll do a lot of hard coding in here. You also, a lot, some of your assignments have regular coding. Uh, if hard coding is when you like, if there's a bunch of shit to do, you do it rather than asking the person running the program to do it. Like building a database, you want the person building it to the one using it to build it. So that wouldn't be hard coded. But in terms of like, if I have you an assignment where you need to do something that's like a very miniature database, when we start doing arrays, I don't want to have to fill out a 20 thing array every time I check someone's answer for the thing. So I will have you hard code up answers, or hard code up the, the, the results. Uh, this little symbol right here, that is called the insertion operator. So what that line above is doing is telling the computer to insert the string literal hello world into the output string, i.e. monitor or screen. So insertion operator. When we do inputs, it's going to go the other direction, but that's for another day. If I want to comment, if I'm going to comment out using namespace std right now, real quick, if I do Notice all of a sudden, it doesn't like my first hello world line. If you're using Visual Studio 2022 and you do something that is not going to work, it usually red flags it. This shit is telling me, see out an end line, have a problem. And if you put the cur your cursor over it, it actually tells you what the problem is. See out is undefined. See out is in the standard library and I've commented out telling it to go get the standard library. So it doesn't need to know, it doesn't know it needs to go get it. So it doesn't have access. But this line would still work. If I comment out this, this line will still run. Watch this. That line will still run because this part right here is telling it, go use the library, STD. So this part right here, std colon, uh, you will do this double colon thing a lot. It's called the scope resolution operator.
it tells the program where the shit is that it needs to do. It needs to go use. Uh, but your normal usage will not have STD. It'll have something else like Hefe. If I had a namespace Hefe, if I had a folder Hefe, I could call it Hefe colon. If I bring that back out and I try to run the program, even though it's telling me it's red flagged, there are builders, would you like to continue and run from last time? I'm not gonna say yes, Red, real quick. Notice down here if I have the output and it shows output from debug, it's not very large because it's not a very large font. But down here it says Jones underscore David underscore lecture underscore 01 CPP parenthesis 16 comma 43 has the error and L is undeclared end of fire. 1643 is line 16 character position 40. That can't be character position 43. There's no way. It's telling us line 16 is the important part. When you're writing your code and it's fucking like filling up the screen and it says you get something like this build error here thing, don't close it right away. Go look to see where your errors are at. Because sometimes it doesn't show up very well over here. Over here, there's a little red box that you can't really see very well. But when there's a shitload of text on the screen, it'll show you the red box shows where errors are that, that it's flagging. But this will always tell you, like if you're using 2022 Visual Studios, it will tell you where to go find the error. Okay? And if you say build it from last time, it's going to load the old code. Whatever ran last time. The last thing that ran only had one hello world. I'm going to come back up here and turn on using namespace SCD. <laughs> Any questions? I don't recommend using this standard C out thing. First off, it really looks like you fucking cheated. Because, like, you go to Geeks for Geeks. Geeks for Geeks is a great resource for fucking ideas on how to do something. Because pretty much any homework assignment I can come up with or any homework assignments in a book, unless I just go completely off the fucking edge and come up with my own super original shit. You can actually type in the question, get something pretty similar to it, already cut it up. Use it for ideas, but don't copy and paste. Like, learn from it. Uh, but usually, they always have this STD colon colon. So it just look, if you use this in your code, it just looks like you copied and pasted. All right. So a little more chat to do here. There are some error types that we're just going to talk about today. Uh, first one being a syntax error. Uh, syntax error is a computer language error. I don't want to do a double colon. Computer error, computer language error. Or language error, yeah. I'm going to show an example of it right now. If I get rid of that semicolon. I had a semicolon right here, and now I don't. And now notice STD says it expected a semicolon before it. Because these two lines don't go together as is. And if there's no semicolon, they think this, the computer thinks this is all one line right now. And those lines don't go together. NDEL does not go with STD. So the computer's confused as fuck. Syntax means I, we made a language error. The computer language requires us to end lines with semicolon. So end lines with semicolon. 
If you don't, it assumes the next line is part of it. I'll show you an example of this. Fuck, learn to type, Jones. It is pissed off, why? Did they stop allowing that? You used to be able to do a carriage. They don't allow it anymore. Visual Studios has changed. That used to work. All right, I'll have to come up with a different example of it. Huh. Okay, so syntax error is one type of error. Another type of error is uh, the logic error. This is an error in your algorithm. Algorithm is like the fancy way of saying recipe or instructions. Uh, this often occurs uh, with like math errors or stuff like that fall in this area. If you tell it to divide by zero, it can't do that. That is a math error. And one more type of, oh, that was neat. Digital, not every IDE does this, but notice I was on this line and it notices I've been doing comments. When I hit enter to the next, go to the next line, I did not type those comment lines right there. Sometimes that's handy. Sometimes you're like, fuck, I didn't want them there. And then you got to go delete them. Uh, so, you know what I mean? You're like, quit pre-filling shit in for me. And then other times you're like, why won't you, are you filling in the shit for me? <laughs> the computer is never right. You'll find this out. A runtime error, uh, it, it, it occurs at a runtime. I don't know if you can see this dotted line on the left. When I got my cursor over it, it says, actually says it's main. Just like f of x right here uses parentheses to, for it. Well, no, and that's not the same thing. This is like, ten, maybe I should do this. That's the equivalent of having the int main over there. This bracket the starting curly brace and the ending curly brace go together. Uh, if you're using Visual Studio 2022, when you do the first one, it automatically fills in the second one. Uh, so sometimes that can be annoying. It occurs at wrenching. What the fuck? Uh, like uh, if you needed a character, or you needed an integer and you type a character, the user types a character, a letter, shit don't work. And runtime errors are generally the programmer's fault. Uh, with enough skills, with enough practice and knowledge, you'll know how to prevent people from doing that. That time it didn't autofill in my fucking, it heard me bitching and didn't autofill in the <coughs> motherfucker. You'll know how to deal with these type of issues. So what's going on when we do this? We're typing in a programming language. It 
a program language. There's hundreds, if not thousands of them now. When we hit the debugger or build, we are telling the computer to turn our instructions into binary code, which the computer knows understands. The computer doesn't know how to read our code. It knows how to read binary. And the IDE converts, when you hit build, it converts our code into binary code so the computer knows what the fuck to do. Then it compiles the code, and then it compiles it. So that we actually have something to run. I know why it's not doing it. I don't have it all the way to the left. It flags, it tells you when there's a bug. Uh, where are they? Then it compiles the code so that we have a file in the system. File on the computer that is named uh, what we named the SLL or the source. And I want to say it has SLN with it or EXE. SLN is solution. No, SLN is something that Visual Studio uses. Uh, when there's one to actually execute, we'll see that. Uh, and then after that, it executes it. Executes the file, which is computer scientist language for saying run. So that's what's happening when I'm clicking local window, window debugger. There is a drop down menu here. There is other shit to click uh, if you're doing other things, but you won't need to do anything else in this class other than local windows debugger. If you're using Visual Studio 2022. Holy shit, it's five o'clock. I use up all your time. Thank you. Yeah. How can the zoom things in the way? There we go. So in future classes, sometimes we'll be done early. Sometimes we won't. Usually we'll be done early. Uh, but Juan's going to be in here for the next two hours helping people. No, it's not today. It's not today, uh, y'all. He said, he said, F you all. He's the chess club leader, which is next door. <laughs> I am actually going to check this out. What I'm going to do right now is I'm copying. Oh, shit. I lost that. Where is it? There it is. I'm going to go copy and paste this right now into the announcements. Wait, what does the trend do at the end? Return. It, it says return zero. Zero is the integer being returned. We don't use it. But in, when we, use, we make our own functions, we'll use whatever it returns. So this hello world uh, assignment? Or like it's not doing anything here other than saying the program is over. So I kind of still ran it right here on this uh, REPL. And I'm using like the, the whole C++ thing. And I pretty much wrote everything that you wrote right now. But uh, it still runs and everything. But I didn't do return zero at the end. So should I put return zero to your liking at the end? Or you probably the, should. So you should get used to using functions the right way. Okay, so, so after the bracket, um, it's the is line, right before the final end bracket. And it's just return zero. Yep. And semicolon. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, right. uh -huh. You know, don't need it. Oh wait, no. Okay, no, I did that wrong. Okay, so it's not like that, huh? Yeah, yeah it returns zero. Oh, the return zero is before the end bracket. Before the bracket yeah. okay, okay. okay, back over here. Let's see. I'm going to do that. I have found out that if I don't put this 
in pre-formatted, it looks shitty. Returns here will always be the return value, especially when we're using something like CMAS or creating an application. Yeah. And if we don't, then it, it'll create a lot of problems. Re return, you actually need, because it'll tell you that's the output. So if you're like doing something where you write your own like math program, like the X cube thing, if you don't tell it to return the value that's produced by cubing the input number, it doesn't help the program to use it. So the return will be will like return the answer to the the math function kind of thing. You'll see. And thanks for letting me sit in. No problem. Professor Jones. Is it, uh, are you teaching calculus one at all this semester? Or Not this semester, but next semester. Yeah, I think I might take it with you, man. Okay. Because, uh, I'm in Tulare. Are you in Tulare? Yeah. So I have to go out to you. Is, um, I already took everything Jared first. Did not go good, and now I'm taking Mark Tom. It's not working for you either. It's already been like the first week. It's the same old bullshit. Like, like these I don't know. I don't know. But, like basically, I don't like the way they're treating the students. Like, they're more like um, there's they want to have a gap between professors and students. And keep, like I'm very much more open about who I am and whatnot to like close that gap. Yeah, yeah. They're less approachable to students. They're actually good professors, both of them. But if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. I don't think so. It just felt, it just didn't feel right. Yes. Just make it so. I mean, it's been a while since I had done it. Like, I actually recently got a laptop, but so I didn't bring it away. So, so, most of this will be like through uh, Zoom, right? And, you know. I am like, actually, I need to hit stop record. So, sorry about that. I'm glad you said Zoom. You helped, actually.